안녕하십니까 니콜라스입니다 Some days ago I made a video about Flutter and why you should learn it The video blew up and we got many comments mentioning React Native and how it compares to Flutter So on today's video I would like to put React Native and Flutter side by side to see what their weaknesses and strengths are as well as when to use one versus the other one I have used both React Native and Flutter. I have built and released apps using both of them. And I also recorded hundreds of hours of free and paid courses using them both. That is to say that I have gone past all the shiny features and promises all these frameworks make. And I have actually hit some roadblocks and found some rough corners and edge cases that could be a deal breaker for some startups. One thing I would like to ask us is to avoid going into absolutes. One project isn't 100% better than the other. They are both great and it is never a good idea to marry a framework and make it part of your identity or to hate something no. so much that you would never use it. Also, be careful in the comment section with people that seem to be too sure of themselves. Some people might have great stories about using Flutter and I'm sure others won't. Look at Airbnb, for example. They migrated to React Native and then after a while, they decided they should migrate away from React Native, back to pure native because of some problems they encountered. Does that mean that React Native sucks and no one should use it? Not really. It just means that it did not work for Airbnb's requirements. There were some trade-offs to be made and maybe they did not want to make them. And this is what this video will be mostly about. Trade-offs. There is no absolute answer and it depends on you and on what your project needs. So let's get started with strengths and weaknesses. A strength of React Native is the fact that it is just JavaScript and React. The rules of React are the same, CSS is mostly the same, and JavaScript is the same. This means that learning React Native for a React developer is easy. Onboarding a front-end developer into a React Native developer is also super easy. And it also means that the pool of developers you can hire for a React Native project is definitely bigger. In the case of Flutter, Dart is a language that even though it's not hard to learn, and even though it looks a lot like Java or C Sharp, it is nevertheless a language that almost no one was using before Flutter, which means that the talent pool is smaller compared to the size of the pool of React developers. And it means that onboarding a new developer to a Flutter project will not be as quickly as with React Native. The thing is that in my opinion, taking the time to learn Dart and Flutter pays off big Time. I say this because working with Flutter feels like working with a big, fully featured framework. And working with React Native feels a bit more minimalistic. It's like building a website using Next.js, an awesome framework that has many built-in features like routing, server-side rendering, image compression, API routes, static optimization, versus building a project using React.js only and having to implement all those features by yourself. The same feeling you would get if you compare building a backend using Django versus building a backend using Flask or Fast API. By default, Flutter has many built-in features like navigation, translations, dark mode, theming, animations, some kind of state management, plus a huge collection of pre-made components out of the box. All that comes enabled when you make a Flutter app. And if you don't find what you need built into the framework, the official Flutter team actually maintains other packages of other things you would need, like routing, camera access, file selection, maps, web use, in-app purchases, etc. React Native does not provide all no, those no, things no. I just mentioned out of the box. You have to install many third-party packages and write your own code to get feature parity with what a Flutter app has enabled okay. by default. When I started using React Native in 2016, the project was more like Flutter. The framework provided more components and APIs out of the box. But because the team has to prioritize and they cannot maintain all these APIs and components, they decided to cut back on the amount of components and APIs they were going to officially maintain to focus on making the core of React Native better. Having said all that, there are companies in the React Native ecosystem like Expo that are pushing incredibly high quality packages and APIs that React Native does not provide by default, like Calendar, camera, face detection, maps, notifications, among many, many others. So on this point, I think Flutter might be stronger than React Native because it seems to be more centralized and less dependent on third parties compared to React Native. That centralization is good in a way that the Flutter documentation, their YouTube channels, the video series that they make, the tutorials, it all comes from the same source. Flutter feels like the Google product that it is. But also that centralization is bad because what happens to Flutter if Google lays off the Flutter team? Will it survive? Who knows? 
Another point that I feel is a strength to Flutter is the developer experience. The integration with the code editor is great and the developer tools are out of this world. Upgrading Flutter versions isn't that scary either compared to React Native. And as I have seen on the comments of the courses I recorded, people have less trouble installing Flutter and getting a project running compared to the pains they experience with React Native. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can right now click the link below and enroll in our free React and React Native courses. And then enroll in our free Dart and Flutter courses and see for yourself. The Achilles heel of Flutter that I know will make it a no-go for some teams is Code Push. Code Push is what allows React Native developers to update their applications without having to go through the App Store approval process again and again. Because a React Native application is basically an iOS or Android app that just runs JavaScript, developers can just replace the JavaScript the app is running by making the app download a JavaScript file rather than rebuilding and submitting the app again, which means they can fix bugs and test new features in a matter of minutes versus days. Flutter does not have that because Flutter apps actually compile the code they run to native binaries. So to update a Flutter app, you actually need to replace the binary the user is running by recompiling the app and submitting it to the App Store again. There are some ways of emulating code push by using Firebase remote configuration, but what you can update is much more restrictive and it has to be planned in advance. Something about Flutter that may or may not be a problem to you is how multi-platform it wants to be. The goals of the Flutter team is to allow people to make apps and even games for all screens and devices, which is awesome. But maybe because the scope of that is just too big and the surface area of the project is too broad, they might be overextending themselves and they might not be able to maintain all the packages and APIs of all the platforms they want to support. I have experienced this before where some official Flutter packages are not as good or as useful as they could be. And I think that if only the Flutter team had time to fix some bugs and just make things a bit better, rather than trying to be so multi-platform, the apps that I make with Flutter could be much better which I guess is what the React Native team realized a long time ago and why they are focusing on one thing and one thing only, which is making the core of React Native great and having less APIs and components to maintain. That is not to say that the quality of the Flutter packages is bad. It's great. And I actually prefer using a package from the Flutter team rather than having to use a third-party package from a random developer the way React Native forces me to. So now the question is, when to use Flutter and when to use React Native? Before I tell you my opinion, I honestly think that you should try them both. I made both React Native and Flutter courses. They are for free. You can take them right now, see and compare. Just click the link below and I will see you there. But to answer the question, I honestly think it depends and it depends on many factors. For example, if a startup is using JavaScript on the backend and on the frontend and it already has a bunch of React developers, maybe exploring React Native as an option would be good. The same could be said for Flutter. If you already have a backend built with Java and the developers are all comfortable with object-oriented programming, Flutter might be easier to get started with. At the end of the day, both of these frameworks are cross-platform frameworks. So you will face some problems whether you go with one or the other. But, and here is where many of you might disagree with me, if you are a startup founder or a solo entrepreneur or a team of developers starting a new project and you want to build your idea quickly and you need all the help you can get, then I would really advise giving Flutter a try. I say that because objectively, Flutter has more pre-built out-of-the-box features, which will help you move fast and get your app in front of the users quickly. And you can combine Flutter with Firebase, another Google product, to get even more speed in your development process. I think Flutterbase plus Firebase is a combination that will make you a savage in the app developer. I really do. Of course, before committing to a framework, lay down a list of all the features your app should have and then see which framework supports the most features, which one has the most packages and how well maintained they are. And most important of all, don't let a video, a blog post or a comment prevent you from learning something new. Try the frameworks yourself and then make a choice. 
The free floater for beginners course is seven hours long and the React Native for beginners is five hours only. You can watch them on a weekend and see which framework you liked the most, which one had a better developer experience, which one was easier to install and so on. Like I said, the courses are free, so click the link below to sign up and I will see you there. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you have tried Flutter or React Native and what are your thoughts. Thank you as always for watching. Onodo, kamsahago, saranhago, daomebayo. See you on the next one. Bye bye.